Hey everyone. So out here in the shop, this is one of my current projects going on out here. This is kind of what remains of a 770 Oliver. And what we're doing is we are deleting the power booster drive on it because uh, it doesn't work. Um, I could fix it, but I don't want to because essentially what the power booster does is you know, when this tractor is a straight drive, it has six speeds forward, two reverse, and when you have the power booster drive in, it turns it into 12 speeds forward and four speeds reverse. So essentially what it is, is it's kind of like a power shift, so to speak. Basically, say, if I'm in first and I'm in direct, and it starts pulling hard, I'm starting to lose power, I can pull the lever and put it into power booster drive which uh, don't quote me exactly on the numbers but what it does is it gives me a 30 percent reduction in ground speed and then it gives me a 25 percent increase in pulling power <clears throat> so we're not going to get too technical on the disassembly because well I already disassembled it but as you can see nose cones off engines out dash is off hydraulic unit is pulled out and the power booster is out one thing I will say that was definitely interesting so I got the factory service manual to help me out with certain stuff I uh, don't really need it a lot but it is kind of interesting to see the description that they describe for certain procedures. You know, it definitely gives a guy a, huh, I didn't think of that. But actually how it describes the procedure to remove this is it actually tells you to remove the engine with the radiator and the dash all attached to each other. So it actually, you know, it says in the description, oh, make sure you see how good your radiator hoses are because that's the only thing going to be holding it to the engine. So they have you lifting the engine up and out with the radiator attached, full of coolant so you don't have to drain it. And then it actually tells you to just lay the dash on top of the valve cover and then you just lift the whole works out as one unit. So anyway, here's why we did this. Here's the power booster. Now this is actually, I assembled it back together just so I wouldn't lose any of the pieces. But, so the clutch shaft, this goes into the engine, or into the bell housing, and then, then this splines to the clutch. And then this is what kind of makes it work. So you got a set of clutch packs in here. Um, and when the clutch packs are applied, that's what gives you direct drive. Oops. And then it ends up going to the transmission by the input shaft. And now when you're in power booster drive, power comes through the input shaft. And then the clutch plates in here, they're just along for the free ride. They're just spinning loose. There's no pressure on them whatsoever. And they the power is going through the clutch pack housing and inside the power booster let me grab a light here if I can find one so when the power goes through the clutch housing, it ends up spinning this gear, which sends the power up to this gear, which is attached to the second gear, and then that comes down to this gear, which then supplies power to the input shaft, sends it into the transmission. 
The one thing I think is very interesting about this gear is the inside of it. It's got a, you know, at first glance it looks like just a roller bearing, but them bearings in there are actually an odd shape. They're not round, they don't spin in there, they're almost kind of like a dog bone. And what that purpose is, is that <clears throat> when you're in direct drive, the input shaft just rotates in there freely, doesn't affect it whatsoever. But when you're in power booster drive, and it sends the power through this gear, it actually rotates this, I think uh, the, this whole assembly is called the spray clutch, <clears throat> but it actually rotates this bearing in here and locks it to the shaft and it basically, that's how it drives it, it's just by uh, a friction grip, so to speak. And that's why that this didn't really work and why I'm replacing it is this in here slipped, would slip on the shaft. When you're in power booster drive at idle, it would drive, but as soon as you got on the throttle a little too much, it would slip and then it would stop moving. So you'd go back to direct and go about your TM, or go about your day. The pieces you need to replace this so you'll need a new in transmission input shaft. You would need a, a belt pulley delete holder or a belt pulley, a coupler, and a new clutch shaft. Now the interesting part is this clutch shaft is particular to a 770 only. That's the tough piece to find out of this whole works. Now I have an 880 with the power booster that needs to be deleted also and what I'm having a hard time finding is this shaft because on my 880 it's a newer version with a helical gear transmission so the input shaft is particular to that tractor. So I think I have all the pieces to delete it on my 880 just looking for this one yet. A couple other pieces, or well, yeah, at least a couple other pieces you'll need is 13 sixteenths frost plugs. Now I bought the thick deep style because I knew the front of the transmission casting was fairly thick so I thought I was being smart by doing that but as you can see, there is a slight little step in there. So if you're going to do it, buy the shallow ones, don't buy the deep ones. And then, I suppose one of the other particular things that you're going to have to remove is this pan. So how the power booster gets its lubrication through them gears is when the gears and the transmission are spinning they fling oil up, this pan catches it and funnels it down through this hole which supplies the power booster oil and that is why in the service manual it tells you, or the operator's manual, manual it tells you that if you have a power booster drive you have to put 10W30 in the transmission because in cold weather 80-90 takes too long to warm up and you'll starve the sprague for oil and burn it out. And I suppose another one of the difficult points is this lovely snap ring. It sits on the input shaft right in front of this bearing. Um, those are kind of a bear to put back on because there's no ears. Getting them off wasn't a big deal. I just used the right angle snap ring pliers and kind of left the shaft in this back bearing, just pulled it out enough 
that I could expand it and slide it on the shaft and then when I to get it off the rest of the way I just used it against the gear set while it was in there like a slide hammer and just pulled it out and then made sure I caught the snap ring hopefully when I put this back together I do not drop the snap ring in the transmission because I can see me doing that but at least I'm getting smarter in my old age I remember when I did these input shaft bearings on my Super 88 and I didn't have all the fancy tools back then so I have saved this this is how I got that snap ring off the one time was just a dinner fork that I literally bent the heck out of so how far some of us have come in our mechanicing abilities <clears throat> so anyway that's kind of what I got going on here in a nutshell and well since I had to pull the hydraulic unit off I got bearings and seals to freshen up the pump a little bit and then when that gets all mounted back together I got a power traction hitch sitting outside so that's when I'll redo my hoses and fittings and whatnot but it's kind of all I got for now I know it's not very interesting to just listen to me gab and you know my camera abilities hopefully it'll get better that uh, I'll record some of this as I'm doing it um, right now I really need a different camera because when I'm holding it like this I really can't tell if you're seeing my head or if you're seeing half my head but uh, anyway that's all for a different time thanks for watching